Hello students, this is Shayna, your teacher from EspressoEnglish.net and I'm here today with another uh, video for our November news series of live lessons on Facebook. So today is an important day in the news because we just had the results of the United States presidential election. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you some words and phrases from the election. Uh, six of these phrases were actually used by the candidates, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, uh, when talking or when making public speeches last night and today. So let's get started. The first word is stunned. A lot of people were stunned by the result of this election. If you are stunned, it means you are surprised and shocked, okay? So if you say people were stunned, it means everyone was surprised, shocked. They didn't expect the result of the election to be Donald Trump winning. You can say the people are stunned and you can say that the result was stunning. So this follows the rule in English that we use ing when an adjective is describing a thing. So you could say this lesson is interesting or this lesson is boring. I hope it's not boring. And use the ed form when talking about the people, describing how the people feel. So you could say the people are stunned. I am interested in this lesson or I am bored by this lesson. I hope not. All right, so remember that rule. Use the ING form when talking about the event. The results of the election were stunning. And use the ED form when talking about how the person feels. People are stunned or I was stunned, okay? One reason people were stunned by the result of this election is that it was not predicted in any of the polls that Donald Trump would win. What is a poll? Well, the word poll actually has two meanings that are related to elections. In this case, I'm talking about the research that is done before and during the election. So a poll is when someone calls a bunch of people and asks them, who are you going to vote for? And then they record the answers and they calculate all the numbers. And that research, that study is called a poll, taking a poll to evaluate the opinion of the public. Now, the word poll is used in another way in the election. You might see or hear the expression, go to the polls. The population is going to the polls. And when used in this way, that just means that the people are going to vote, okay? The place where we vote is called the polling place. So you could find your local polling place. So that's two ways that the word poll is used in when talking about an election. It refers to both the process of doing research and studying by asking people what they are planning to do and how they are planning to vote, and the expression go to the polls means to go and vote for a candidate. So now I'm going to teach you some of the phrases that Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump actually used in their speeches. So expressions three, four, and five were said by Hillary in her speech today um, when she was congratulating Donald Trump on the victory and she was admitting defeat and thanking all the people who supported her. So one thing she talked about was the values we cherish as Americans. And uh, she mentioned peaceful democracy and America being a good place for all people. Those were some of the values she said that Americans cherish. Now, what does this word cherish mean? If you cherish something, it means you love it and you hold it very, it's very dear to you. It's very close to your heart. So this is a word with a lot of emotion, okay? Um, you can cherish values, like Hillary Clinton said, democracy and diversity. 
You can also cherish memories. For example, um, my grandmother passed away, she died, but I cherish the memories I have of her because they are very special to me. Um, you can cherish an object. For example, I cherish a necklace that my husband gave me. Okay, so if you cherish something, it means that it's very special to you. So Hillary Clinton was talking about some of the values that Americans cherish. And she also talked about how she experienced many successes and setbacks in her career and that the result of this election was a setback. What is a setback? That is something that takes you back from progress. So you're making progress, you're going forward, and then a setback brings you back. It makes you stop the progress or even go in reverse and lose some of that progress. So this is a noun. We can say a setback or several or many setbacks, okay? But it refers to something that brings your progress backward instead of forwards. She also mentioned that we have not yet shattered the glass ceiling. Now this expression is going to take a little bit of explanation. Let me start with this part over here, the glass ceiling. We have this expression, it refers to the fact that when you have a company or a government or an organization or any structure of power that for women and minorities, people who are not white, it's difficult to get to the higher levels of that government or company or uh, organization. And so a lot of people refer to this limit for women and for people of different uh, ethnicities or skin colors as the glass ceiling. It's like you can get up this far, but then you can't go any higher or it's very difficult for you to get any higher. And so what Hillary Clinton wanted to do as the first, uh, potentially the first woman who would be president, she wanted to shatter the glass ceiling. The word shatter means to break something into very small pieces, okay? We usually use this verb shatter with glass. So if you have a wine glass, a wine glass is very delicate, and you drop it on the floor, it is going to shatter. It's going to break into a lot of small pieces. So Hillary wanted to shatter the glass ceiling. She wanted to get up beyond the limit that uh, it's difficult for many women and minorities to get through, but she said it has not yet happened today because she lost the election. All right, so those are three phrases from Hillary. And now let's look at three phrases from Donald Trump. One of the things he said was, he talked about the people who didn't support him. And he said, I'm reaching out to you and so that we can work together. And I wanted to talk about this expression, reaching out. We use the word reach to talk about extending your hand. So to reach out is to put your hand out. But in this context, when Donald Trump said, I'm reaching out to the people who didn't support me, reach out means to make a special effort to communicate with and to connect with. So this expression shows that he is willing to communicate with and connect with even the people who didn't support him. Uh, he talked about, he made a number of general statements about things he planned to do, but one of them was that he wanted to rebuild the American infrastructure. Infrastructure, that's a bit of a difficult word to pronounce, infrastructure, refers to the roads and bridges and the the power lines, the system of electricity and water, and all of these basic systems that we need to function in society. That's the infrastructure. And he said he wanted to make American infrastructure second to none. Can you think of what that expression might mean, second to none? Second to none is just uh, another way of saying the best, okay? Because if you think about it, something that's in first place, uh, is the best and then everything else is second and third and fourth so if you're in first place there's nothing 
above you. So second to none just means the best. And you can use this in a lot of different ways. For example, if you go to a restaurant that has amazing uh, cheesecake, for example, that's a dessert, it's a sweet cake. Um, you could say, oh, the cheesecake at that restaurant is second to none. It means that restaurant has the best cheesecake uh, in the area or in the world, okay? So second to none means the best. And another thing that Donald Trump said was that he wanted to seek common ground with other countries, other nations. Um, and this expression, the word seek is another way to say look for. Uh, seek is a little bit more formal uh, when talking about, let's say, everyday things. We would normally say, uh, I can't find my keys, I'm looking for my keys. We don't say, I'm seeking my keys. It just sounds a little too formal for everyday life. But uh, you'll see the word seek in news articles. It's also very common to talk about people who are seeking a job. That means they don't have a job and they are looking for a job. They are trying to find a job. And sometimes those people are called job seekers, okay? So seek means to look for or to search for. And then common ground is an expression that you might be able to guess means things in common, things that are the same, things that are similar, okay? You might talk about, um, let's see, uh, two companies maybe who are looking to work together and they might seek common ground. Like if you have a company that sells musical instruments and you have another company that sells printed music, they have some common ground because they're both in the music industry and so they might be able to work together in that. So that was another phrase from Donald Trump's um, speech about seeking common ground with other nations. And that's what I hope happens with the United States. Um, this election showed that the country is very deeply divided. Remember in my first English in the News uh, lesson, I talked about immigration being a divisive issue, something that uh, splits people apart and separates them and causes conflict. And we've seen a lot of conflict in this election. And I think a lot of Americans are relieved that it's over, but also a bit apprehensive because they don't know what's going to happen in the future. Um, and so what I hope is that Americans can seek common ground and can work together to improve things um, because we have the responsibility in addition to our leaders to work together and make things better. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed today's English in the News lesson. All of these expressions, again, come from just very recent news from yesterday and today. I hope you've learned something in this lesson. I will stop this video and then you will be able to watch the recording and leave a comment on my YouTube channel. Also make sure to subscribe so that you get more videos like this and you can get notified when I go live. We had 75 people watching today's live lesson. Thank you so much for everyone who joined and I will see you next time.